What is up, most distinguished patrons of this channel? Today I got a little bit of a project that we're going to do together. And a lot of you guys have been asking me about doing a project together. So that's what we're going to be tackling today. Let's get into it. Over the past year or so, I've had numerous people question or leave comments dealing with if I could come up with some kind of weld it yourself kit that we could all do together and I could do a video on how to do it and then sell the kits or something. And I really thought about that and did some research and realized that there's no economical way that I could offer a kit even, and I would probably do it at cost. It's just far cheaper to buy something that already exists and then weld that more or less. So what I thought I would do is behind the scenes here, I bought a bunch of like little different welding kits that are available on Amazon. And I'm going to show you one that I bought and I'm not affiliated with this company. You can buy whatever you want, but I bought a kit and I'll put a link in the description to it and I'll put up a picture of what it is now, but it comes as these two boxes and you more or less weld these together as outside corner joints and you make cubes out of them. Now it comes with two distinct cubes. You have this guy which is open and then the inside which is laser cut out you can make a secondary cube like this. And for the money this was like 30 bucks. It comes with enough to make I don't know four or five cubes which for that kind of money there's no way that I could even have that made for anywhere near that. And based on the kits that I bought, this is the one that I would recommend that's probably worth the money. I mean, for 30 bucks, it's hard to go wrong with this setup. You actually do get a fair amount of material. Now, all of this stuff is coated with mill scale and it's kind of a pain to clean. So if you're going to be TIG welding this like I am today, it pays to really do a great job on your prep work because otherwise it's just going to contaminate your weld pool and probably your tungsten at that. But what we're going to focus on doing today is a smaller cube out of this kit and we're going to TIG weld up a cube and I'm going to give you a ton of tips on how to do this with TIG. Anyways, I'm going to get all these pieces broke out of here. Some of them are still attached a little bit and then we're going to look at the setup and I'm going to give you tips on that. So the first step in making your cube is we need to tack three sets of two in a 90 degree position and what I found is I have an old pipe wrench here I collect these I have a bunch of them and for this task it will work perfectly fine now you probably don't have an old pipe wrench because you're not cool like me and collect old junk um, if you got a C clamp or some kind of bar clamp anything like this that will also work but what we want to do is set it to where we have it more or less at a 90 degree angle I find that taking something for weight that can sit on the top of this will kind of help keep it to where you can tack it. Otherwise, they kind of tend to want to collapse. But what we need to do is tack up three of these and then check that they're square. So I'll do that now. So we're going to watch me tack weld the corners to get an idea what you should be looking at. I have this in super slow motion. Now, I didn't clean these off the best, so there's kind of some spark shooting off. You, please clean it better than I did and you won't have that issue. Anyways, you light up on the edge and you kind of bring the arc to the left to the right. So basically hitting both of those edges. And as you watch those edges kind of break down and start to melt, you bring that filler rod in there and kind of hold it where the arc is. At that point, you slowly increase the amperage a little bit in order to form a puddle. And you can kind of see there where everything's kind of starting to melt together. That's what you want to see. Believe it or not, when I was first learning how to TIG weld, the hardest thing for me was tack welding, especially on fillet welds, but even outside corner joints. I don't know what it was. I just couldn't figure out how to do it. And I struggled more than even running a fillet weld. I just, I sucked at it. We'll just put it that way. So if you're having issues with tack welding stuff, this is a great exercise. It wouldn't hurt to even tack it in the middle of it just to get experience. The key is, is that that molten puddle 
nips the edges off and you're not melting like the whole edge off. You got to be careful about that. So watch your heat input. Now let's watch two tack welds in real time. Now that all of these suckers are pretty much dead on square, we can get to sort of assembling this. And the best way that I found is to take two of them at a time and set them up to where you're more or less building two thirds of a cube. Now a little tip for you. If you round off the edge of this with a grinder, when you set this on here, it will allow the plate to come closer here because this corner being sharp ends up hitting your tack weld. And you can see how the fitment isn't very good versus when you round it off, like this guy right here, you can get a very tight fit. Luckily, this kind of supports itself, so we don't need to use this big wrench anymore. But what I would do is find, I guess, the closest spot that looks like it's fit up good. Like this is fit up good. This is a little bit open. That's a little bit open. So I think we need to tack weld this and this, and then we can bend this with a pliers to get our fit up better. The time you spend to get this sucker fit up will end up giving you better results in the long run. I mean, don't get me wrong, if you fit it up like crap and you got big gaps all the way, I guess that's not bad practice because in the real world you might have to TIG weld gaps and stuff. So that's not the worst case scenario, but if you want to make something that at least looks pretty decent, uh, you probably should spend a little extra time on the fit up. Well, I got this sucker all tacked up here and it went pretty good because those three sections were basically 90 degree angles, the fit up went really good. Now I did have to kind of squeeze this a little bit to get it to go, uh, to line up. And I just use this clamp here, work great. If you got a C clamp or something, that'll work great. But when you look at the fit up of here, it's, uh, it's pretty close to perfect. I mean, there's some overlap here and there, and you're gonna have that. This simply isn't that precise, especially the way you have to construct this but for the most part the biggest gap is this right here and that's going to be no problem whatsoever for me to weld nor should it be for you the better the fit up you have the more consistent this will look when you're done so obviously if you're trying to make a show piece you probably should do a lot of time on the fit up but for practice, this is more than adequate. Now, as far as settings to weld this with, there's a lot of ways you could weld this. You could do a lay wire technique, which I've shown in previous videos where you hold the wire there and then you weld right over the wire. The problem with that is you're probably gonna get a lack of fusion. So I wouldn't recommend doing that on things that actually matter. You could do it on this and you'd probably get pretty decent looking welds. But my recommendation would be to start the arc and actually weld it and dab and retract the wire. That way you're gonna be able to see what's going on in the root of the joint and you're gonna know that you have fusion. Now you could also run a pulse program with this and I have a whole video coming out on TIG pulse that should help you out with that. But you could run a pulse and get a nice stack of dimes on something like this uh, using that. But again, I would recommend, especially if this is your first one, avoid all of that. Just do the simple, you know, dab and move technique with this. Honestly, it'll do everything you want and it'll build up a lot of muscle memory and practice on this. Like this is a great way to build your uh, outside corner joint skill because, well, there's so many of them. Now, one of the downsides to this particular cube out of the set is that because there's not a cutaway in it, you can't see what the inner part of the weld looks like. One of the great things with the other piece that this kit comes with is that when you weld it, you can see right through and you can see all the insides of your welds. Ideally, you should have some reinforcement with this. And that's why I'm going to fully weld this out and we're going to cut it and look at the internals of it to get an idea of what it looks like inside. And then, I don't know, maybe at a later date, I'll weld this back together and make a little 
nice little paperweight. This is going to be pretty heavy when it's done. Now, as far as settings goes for amperage, I'm going to find a fine-tuned amperage, maybe 70, 80, 90 amps, somewhere in there, where I can start the arc on the corner, give it a minute, let the puddle wet out, and then I can move at a consistent pace, and I'm flat-footed on the TIG pedal, a.k.a. 100 percent amperage and by doing that it's going to give me very consistent welds when you're using the foot pedal and throttling it constantly it's going to be tough not impossible like i can do it you know but i have a lot of hours under my belt you probably couldn't do that as easy especially if you're new to this so you're going to want to find like an amperage where it's just hot enough so not like melting through and not so cold that the metal just sticks like builds up out but hot enough to where that puddle you know is fusing in that root and you just drag it along at a flat foot and eliminate the foot pedal completely it's just you the filler rod and your arc gap and your travel speed trying to eliminate as many variables as possible with something like this will give you the best results all right well i'm going to get set up and let's weld this sucker out i sped this up so we can get through it a little bit quicker I'm going to show you two different ways that I feed filler. In this one, I have it kind of pinched between my fingers. Occasionally, I'll use my thumb to feed a little bit more filler if the wire starts burning back. You can see I'm using my thumb there to feed it. It doesn't look like it, but I'm opening my fingers and closing them to pinch the wire in order to progress that wire forward. This is a common way that I weld out of position welds like on pipe or something similar where I just don't have the angle to get my hand in there right, should really practice a number of ways to feed filler. Also, if you notice, the light output kind of never changes much, and that's because my arc gap is staying very consistent. That's what you want. So now we're going to watch me actually weld the whole outside corner joint. I start up on that tack, wait for the puddle to get about the size to where it covers the edge, and then I just start moving. I'm feeding filler in a little bit at a time. You're talking about like half a millimeter or less that I'm pushing in. So not very much at all. Less than, I don't know, a 32nd of an inch. And I'm just pushing that puddle and allowing it to stay the same shape, same size, all the way start to finish. As far as amperage is concerned, I ran this cube at anywhere between 60 and 100 amps and just varied my travel speed. You have a lot of leeway with TIG for what your amperage is. To get the best results, you really need to just pick an amperage and go full pedal and then just basically push the puddle fast enough that it doesn't overly melt the corners. you got to find a sweet spot for your setup. And again, keeping that tungsten arc gap is the most important thing here. Just being consistent in that. And you can tell how consistent this is because the light output never changes. That's because the arc gap is staying exactly the same. Well, I got this sucker welded up and it's hotter than a $2 pistol. Um, one of the things you can do to get a little bit better results is to let it cool every maybe three passes. I kind of like jumped around, but I would say halfway through, I could tell just by how the molten puddle looked, it started to get like overly cooked. But hey, I had to get this video done. I only have so much time today to do it. so. Turned out pretty good. Let me flip it here for you. Not bad at all. The fit up on one of them was kind of a weird angle to where it was, I don't know, I might, maybe my tungsten angle was a little bit off, but welded a little bit crappy. But uh, for the most part, really didn't weld that bad. And it definitely would have paid probably to clean a little bit more of the scale off. I thought I had it pretty clean, but I could see some of that crap floating up in the puddle. But like I said, not bad at all. If you have any kind of decent TIG skills or you want to build decent outside corner skills, this gives you a lot to think of. 
And one of the cool things is, and I didn't do a good job here, but if you buff the whole surface of this and don't leave any mill scale, more like this guy, I did a better job. You can tell by the heat affected zone colors, when you get a real nice pattern like this where it's square inside, that's telling you that your travel speed and your heat input all stayed relatively the same. The closer you can get to mimicking the outside shape with the inside heat affected zone line, the better. Like here you can see, I must have ran a pass here when it was a little bit hotter because it came in further. This must have been colder because it's a little bit, you know, of a rectangle. But you can learn a lot from that alone uh, besides how the weld itself looks. You should always strive on an outside corner joint to have more of a rounded profile like what this is rather than a concave profile. That would be undesirable. Very easy to get concave welds with TIG. It's kind of in the nature of it. By pushing more filler, you can get a real nice round profile. That's what you want. Most of these fall under that. Some of them not so much, but aim for a little bit over like flush definitely go for the rounded over corner push enough filler in there all right well i think covered enough of this so let's cut this in half see what's inside my guess is there's going to be some penetration but not a whole lot and what's there should be pretty consistent start to finish looking at this the overall penetration looks pretty good in there most of them are fully penetrated not bad at all. Even these guys right here looking pretty good. This one's a little spotty, and you're going to have that. It's all kind of based on the fit up of this. This side, not as much. It's possible this was the first side that I welded. Eh, it just looks a little colder. Probably went a little bit faster, a little tighter of a gap. You can see in there, no real penetration but everything else is kind of looking okay. Whoop. Yeah, not bad at all. That's about what you should be seeing on something like this. I mean, with the amount of reinforcement on the outside, if you're at flush or maybe a little bit proud of that outside corner and you have some fusion inside, that's going to be about as strong as you're going to get. All right, let's go to conclusion. So this little project is well within the ability of most of you out there if you're at least somewhat experienced with TIG welding. And guess what? If you don't have a lot of experience and you want to get some, this wouldn't be a bad way to try and learn outside corner joints. And this whole kit that they sell you is actually pretty decent in the fact it comes with a ton of pieces and a lot of different things that you can do with them. Like, you don't have to make normal squares like this. Like, you could honestly take one of these, offset this, and try and weld it as, like, an inside corner or a lap weld, which would be pretty tricky. There's all sorts of things you can do. Use your imagination on this. But the biggest takeaway, I guess, is you need to be smooth. You need to have a consistent arc gap. And you need to take your time and not let this overheat. Like once it gets hot, like the results kind of go downhill, uh, or at least for me, they did. Anyways, hopefully you enjoyed the video and definitely try and take something like this on to build your skills. Until next time.